Hey, what we're seeing is we're seeing the resilience in the black community. Less than a week after a mass shooting at the West End's historic park killed two people, the Chickasaw Park community is bringing joy back to the park and they're being intentional about it. Hundreds of people were there last night to celebrate, honor, and remember the two people who lost their lives there last week. WHS 11's Connor Steffen and photojournalist Elijah McKenzie were there with the community as they were calling for action amid condolences. Don't them fall down on our community, Lord. 54 seconds of silence for the 54 lives we've lost this year as of Monday. A quiet yet deafening reminder. Our youth needs to survive. For a hurting community. The contrast today at this park is a stark one. You can still see them remembering the two lives lost on Saturday, though on Wednesday, a different tone as they reclaim their space. One thing with the black community, we're never broken. This is us. You know, we wouldn't be here if we didn't believe in, in us. There's nothing like the black community, and we will get to get together, and we will uh, survive. Take a look. You'll see a completely different park from Saturday. Bringing the community back together, uh, oneness, and, you know, we all have a sense of grief. The lesson, with compassion, you can cultivate a strong and resilient community. We need to learn how to come together. It was just Sunday that hundreds gathered here from community leaders to elected officials, sharing prayers and pleas for progress. These guns, it needs to be put down. Today, similar calls coming from Louisville's youngest. It's traumatizing for me to even see kids and know that they're going to pass away. Like, I think that they should make a law where they take guns away take all the weapons away from kids. Take Continued calls for change. We're hurting, but we're banding together. We're hurting, but we're sticking together. The more you try to do what you do, the stronger we get. A clear message coming from this community rallying tonight. In Chickasaw Park, Connor Steffen, WHAS 11, on your side. The Kentucky Derby Festival will honor the victims of Louisville's mass shootings during a special moment at Thunder Over Louisville. It's going to happen just after 9 p.m. There's a special fireworks salute that will remember those lost in the shootings, those impacted by gun violence, and the first responders that helped save lives. The Big Four Bridge will light up in blue and gold. Those also happen to be the colors of Old National Bank. Then the crowd will be asked to light up their phones to show that we are Louisville strong before the drone show starts at 9.15. Our hope is that as we bring those folks together through our events in the coming weeks, we can help be a part of that healing process. It doesn't matter what event it is, but being out there in the spring in Kentucky um, almost has a magical effect. The 700,000 people filling the waterfront on both sides Saturday, Fourth Thunder. Governor Andy Bashir put on a blood drive in the state capitol in response to Louisville's mass shootings. Doctors at UofL Hospital used 170 units of blood to treat the victims of the old National Bank mass shooting. According to America's blood centers, gunshot victims required 10 times more units of blood than people seriously injured by other traumatic incidents. Governor Bashir was friends with Tommy Elliott, who was one of the five people killed in the shooting. He held up a photo of Tommy while he was donating blood. Uh, and I know that Tommy and, and others uh, would have wanted us uh, to do what's necessary to, to help that next person uh, and the person after that. So um, I feel like I'm doing the right thing for my friend and for others. Um, but also, you know, this is what we do as Kentuckians. A blood right now, just head to redcrossblood.org. A man is facing charges this morning after leading officers <coughs> on both sides of the river on a police chase started in southern Indiana and ended in Louisville. Jeffersonville police say an officer noticed a driver driving recklessly in a neighborhood and then tried to pull him over. The driver was identified as 44-year-old David Vault. Officers in Clarksville helped use stop sticks to blow out his tires at the 10th Street ramp on I-65. Vault continued to drive over the bridge until his car finally stopped on I-64. We, we can actually show you that. Take a look at this. This is the moment Vault was taken into custody. It's from our Trimark camera. Vault is charged with resisting law enforcement, resisting law enforcement with a motor vehicle, and reckless driving. Ah! 
Mel High School's principals turning to parents for help after several fights this week. In these videos, you can see students fighting two girls in the cafeteria. Then it looks like these two or three students fighting outside. Now, the principal sent home a letter to parents where Principal Willie Foster said the ongoing violence is forcing the school to increase security. He urged parents to talk with their students about the consequences of fighting. All the students involved in the fights are being disciplined. JCPS Superintendent Dr. Marty Polio addressed school safety concerns during the local forum Wednesday. And what we learned there is he plans to present his plan for a weapons detection system to the school board next week. It's more expensive than the metal detectors the district asked for, but Polio says they're faster. A multitude of people can walk through essentially at the same time. You're not having to completely empty your pockets of everything. Um, and so that's what we want. We don't want lines of thousands of students standing outside waiting to be scanned. Polio says the technology is similar to what's used at Churchill Downs for the Derby and at the KFC Yum Center. Thunder fireworks are going to lift off at 930 this Saturday in preparation for the show. And uh, those props are very well underway. The recent show of gun violence in the city has some people on the fence about attending with some mixed feelings about safety at the show. From the Louisville mayor to police and festival leaders all say safety is the number one priority. We have every confidence puts us on solid footing to be able to respond quickly and effectively to any eventuality. There are dozens of agencies involved both uniform as well as covert assets. Emergency management also says it's creating a system specifically for attendees to get alerts about the event. 608 on your Thursday summertime heat out there today, but it also comes with some concerns, Colleen. Yeah, it is going to be sunny and nice, but something we should just keep in the back of our not mind. Nothing to be too concerned about, but a red flag warning is in effect for Kentucky and Indiana as well. So this just means conditions are favorable. That is something sparks up to keep it going. We have wind gusts up to 30 miles per hour, very, very low humidity and almost record breaking temperatures. I'll show you that record high that we might break coming up shortly. Sam, what's that one thing we should know about traffic right now? For this morning, we actually have several disabled vehicles on our current traffic tracker map. I'll let you know where exactly these disabled vehicles are and just kind of uh, use some caution in that direction early this morning. I'll let you know much more, including the full on drive times heading into work and school coming up here in a few minutes.